Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna go over the next seven to 10 days, plus the latest on the La Nina and taking a look at the tropics. Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here with another update. If you are new to the channel, I do all four seasons on this channel and really kind of detail it out and break it down for you almost on a daily basis. So we're gonna get into this update right now and take a look at the overall North American view. This is the temperature anomalies for the next seven days. So you can definitely see, we got a pretty, pretty healthy trough that's gonna be coming down from Canada and setting up shop over a good chunk of the northern, eastern two thirds of the United States, bringing some much cooler conditions, if not pleasant conditions for them. We have the monsoonal flow that will continue to remain active. And then the ridge of high pressure that's just been dominating for much of the summer will be over the central plains, over Texas, over a good chunk of the northern plains, all the way up and off the west coast because we do have another developing ridge that'll really start to heat things up at the Pacific Northwest, back into British Columbia, and then we have so much cooler conditions up here in Alaska. And that that's an overall summary for the next seven days. And we do have some kind of sea breeze action with these stalled fronts down here towards just the coastal areas. Those areas could see some above, above average rains and a little bit cooler conditions with all the cloud cover and, and then and the rain around but let's take a look at the overall precipitation anomalies for the next seven days so again with that ridge of high pressure pretty much coming back for the pacific northwest shuts off any uh precipitation for them and a lot of sinking air in that area that's why you're really going to heat up in a big way we've got the monsoonal flow continuing there's the ridge of high pressure that's been prevalent over oklahoma and texas and portions of kansas we do see some little subtle hints of above average precipitation into portions of Kansas back into uh, you know, northern portions of Oklahoma and getting into Arkansas here. But the good thing is areas that have all the flooding rains out of late are gonna be somewhat drying out over the next uh, seven days or just definitely not seeing as much intense rainfall as, as you've seen as of late. But it's also a good sign to see some above average rains across uh, into portions in far northeast areas. And these areas are under actually a severe drought right now. So with these stalled fronts really along the coast here, it's gonna take advantage of these very warm waters out here off, off, the, off into the Atlantic here. And that'll be feeding in and pumping some much needed rain uh, for those areas over the next uh, seven days. But on the severe front, it's pretty quiet guys. Things are quieting down in a big way. There's not much severe weather to really to speak of. For today, Thursday, going into Friday, uh, you know, really ev even into next week, uh, there's not many any type of severe weather type setups. The weather is so somewhat quiet right now overall, which is a good thing. They've got, you know, we've had a lot of flooding rains over the last uh, two weeks in certain areas, but things do see uh, just kind of come down, <laughs> take it down a notch a little bit. And so those are always a good sign to see the weather pattern changing. But here's the overall setup for the last 72 hours as far as rainfall goes. So, hey, some of those areas, you know, up, up here into portions of St. Louis, back into Kentucky, the, all those areas obviously didn't need not need much rain. But that's that cold front will slide it further south and actually brought some much needed rain into the Oklahoma area, back into Texas. Look at all that rain that's unfolded over the last three days into Texas. I know Dallas, Fort Worth finally broke out of their 67 day rainless streak yesterday. So it was an incredible sight to see, to finally see some rain down here in uh, Texas and that, that uh, you know, monsoonal flow uh, is continuing to remain alive and prevalent but also up here into the Northeast, back into Boston, along the East Coast here, they had some beneficial rains just in the last uh, three days. But yeah, here's the latest update from the, from the drought. This actually came out this morning. And yes, yeah, some of those areas back into Texas, Oklahoma into Kansas have actually got even worse with that just ridge of high pressure, just dominating over those areas, just extending the drought. And uh, yeah, and then again, these areas up here into the Northeast, back into Massachusetts, Rhode Island, those areas have actually even extended in portions of severe, even portions of extreme drought. So yeah, it's a good sign that some of these above average rains are at least coming 
uh, you know, coming for them in the next uh, seven days. But yeah, this whole pattern's pretty much been ideal setup with this La Nina. We've been dealing with this La Nina for a while now, months, if not years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, typically this is a pretty much a verbatim La Nina. You got above average rains into the northern interiors and then they traverse across and then you got that subtropical drip not nearly as active and just puts the dry spell with all those uh, colder waters. You can definitely see on the overall sea surface, you know, temperature anomalies, you can, you know, you basically sit, here's the type of typical La Nina type setup. You've got these ab above average, you know, you know, sea surface temperatures with this little warm blob out here in the Northern uh, Pacific Ocean here that usually just feeds this area and pumps relentless amount of moisture into our Northern interior and then funnels it back down. It's fairly dry off the Pacific Northwest right now because it's the dry season. You know, these, these typically you get below average rains this time of year, but yeah, with this in place, the atmospheric river will be coming back with a vengeance, but it probably won't be coming back until like say October timeframe. But, but yeah, typically further to the South, you've got your subtropical jet further to the South. You got all these cooler waters in the equatorial Pacific. Uh, there's just, you know, storms like storms, like warm waters. And as you just get this area of, on the Southern branch, you have less likely or less opportunities to produce rainfall in those type setups. So, but out here into the Atlantic, I mean, we've had a lot of Saharan dust. Uh, it's been fairly quiet and a lot of cooler waters actually in the main development region. But man, look at all those warm waters right along the East Coast there and especially into the Gulf of Mexico. So yeah, things are, you know, quiet right now, but we'll get into the tropical front at the end of the video. But here's the latest update on the La Nina. This was put out by the Climate Prediction Center this morning, so yeah, the La Nina is going to be alive and prevalent really through fall and really through the winter months. I mean, you can definitely see in the blue shaded areas with this La Nina, around, you know, 80, 85 percent, 86 percent chance of it continuing through the fall months, if not 80 percent chance all the way through fall. So, uh, you know, typically you, you would get these uh, same type of conditions, which you would typically see as of, as of late. We are, we are seeing a kind of a downward trajectory, but that actually doesn't actually happen until we get, you know, in the heart of winter or get, you know, getting towards the spring of 2023. So it doesn't actually flip to even a neutral type pattern until your February, say March timeframe. So yeah, right here, it flips to possibly a, a neutral type setup. But that won't be until, you know, again, February, March, April. And then you can see the possibilities of an El Nino, which are almost next to nothing, even as high as 15%. But that's not actually until the spring of 2023. So, yeah, the La Nina definitely looks to continue at least for another three to six months, uh, if not more. So, yeah, going forward, I showed you the setup for the next seven days, but after that, there are subtle hints of another pattern change. We had this significant trough that's going to be digging down off, off the East Coast and the Ohio Valley for the next seven days, and that actually continues beyond that going into the 19th time frame. You get one of these call, what they call backdoor fronts. So all these areas that are experiencing the ridge of high pressure over the next seven days in the central plains and down portions of the deep south will be getting this uh, pattern change going into late next week with this backdoor front that's be coming in off the east. And that's going to be slowly trying to eat away the high pressure system that's been dominant over those areas for an extended period of time with the ridge of high pressure really starting to shift and be dominating over the Pacific Northwest and over time, it'll try to come over the top. So if we extend the view and go in through the 19th to the 24th time frame, we actually see that slow hints, right? So it takes a while to change the overall weather pattern and kind of eat away of this ridge of high pressure that's been dominating over the central United States. <clears throat> but we are seeing signs of that potentially happening but that won't be until say August 20th and beyond time frame. With that ridge of high pressure gonna be lifting and building over the Pacific Northwest, we get this ridge forming over the top. That helps lower the pressures underneath 
and eventually it'll eat away at this high pressure system and eventually bring those average, <laughs> if not below average temperatures or portions of the, you know, the central plains in, in Texas going into, you know, after the 20th of, of the month. And, and if that happens with that ring over the top, that'll help lower the pressures underneath and that will actually help benefit and put some above average rainfalls over those drought parched areas into Kansas, into Oklahoma, into Texas. All the monsoonal flow continues and then rail to the south, you'll have that dominating feature with that ridge of high pressure overhead will help lower the pressures underneath and then have that lift that's needed to create those showers and thunderstorms. And you might have above average precipitation coming back for these areas that you have not seen in months. So I'm expecting a big pattern change ahead, but going out into the, uh, into the tropics, let, let me you know kind of delve into this area right now too as well, because we're looking at sea surface temperatures where technically they're about the sixth warmest since 1982. So they're plenty warm, right? You got plenty of warm, but you need all the dynamics in place to have some sort of tropical development. So on the surface, the sea surface temperatures are, are great if you want if you want tropical type development. So you got plenty of warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico, right along the East Coast, well out here. You got a little bit cooler waters in the, in the north, but you know where these waves come off the coast we do have some above average uh, you know sea surface anomalies so yeah this is the sixth warmest since 1982 and you put all that factor together just based on sea surface temperatures you would actually have a, a fairly hyperactive season you know just based on that criteria but it takes more than that more than the sea surface temperatures there's more elements to the puzzle than just that to get tropical storm you know type development we do actually have another active phase in the in julie oscillation so typically right now here's the phases we're actually in phase one right now through the august 14th but with as we go into that 20th time frame right as we go into that 20th time frame then it sneaks into phase two and goes into phase three towards the first week of September. That is typically an active phase on the tropical development front. So, but that doesn't happen until say 10 days from now. So right now, if that it's slowly transitioning to that phase two look. So you got that trough that's gonna be digging into the east coast right and that's going to bring the back door front eventually is oozing into the central u.s and oozing back into these drought parts areas and bring some of those below average temperatures as the ridge will start building over over the west and over the, you know over the top but out into the atlantic we got a lot of sinking air right now for the next 10 days you got to have upward rising motion air so this all this you know orange and red shaded areas that's sinking air so anything that comes off the coast or anything out in the open waters it's got a tough road i mean it's got a tough road to overcome because you just got a, a pretty good dominance of sinking air over the atlantic over the next uh, 10 days and then we also have a lot of saharan dust as well so this saharan dust has been alive and prevalent typically this saharan dust really doesn't last until august is not as prevalent but this year it is so with all the sinking air around with all the dust around and all the stable air around it's squashing anything that tries to form any of these little tropical waves that tries to form out into the open waters and that's exactly what happened to invest 97l i told you it was gonna lie it had a lot of stable air to overcome and uh yeah slowly the national hurricane center took it from 40 to 30 to 20 percent now we're at zero <laughs> it's not happening folks so yeah it's pretty dry pretty quiet out there into the open waters uh, of the atlantic and then yeah taken beyond that over the next 10 days if we look at some of these ensemble guidance but yeah the only activity we do have active waves that come off the coast of Africa. This is thousands of miles away from land, right? So thousands of miles of land. But we are seeing a couple members, you know, in the extended beyond on that 10 day range, 
that we are seeing the Western Gulf. So this is probably an area that we're going to have to start to keep our eyes on, especially uh, as that backdoor front pulls through, comes over the central plains. If the ridge does develop over the top, like, like I'm expecting, that'll help lower the, uh, the lower pressures underneath and you'll get lower pressures out here into the Gulf of Mexico, but that won't be until about 10 days from now and beyond. So it's definitely quiet now for sure on the uh, tropics front. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update while I protect you before and after the storm.